My dear friends, to find yourself again is to awaken to your true nature, to recognize the divine power that flows through you as you. It is to realize that you are not separate from the creative force of the universe, but rather you are that creative force individualized. You are God in action, expressing itself as you. Now you may be thinking, but Neville, I feel lost. I feel disconnected from my true self. And to this I say, your feeling of being lost is itself a creation of your imagination. It is a state you have unconsciously assumed. And like all states, it can be changed through the power of your imagination. Let us begin by understanding what it means to find yourself. It is not about discovering some hidden aspect of your personality or unearthing long buried talents. No, to find yourself is to recognize your true identity as pure awareness, as the observer of your thoughts and feelings, as the creator of your reality. You see, my dear friends, you are not your thoughts. You are not your emotions. You are not your circumstances. These are all creations of your imagination, projections of your consciousness onto the screen of space. You are the awareness behind these creations. The eternal I am that gives life to all things. To find yourself again is to shift your attention from the created to the creator, from the manifested to the manifester. It is to recognize that you are not a victim of circumstances, but the author of your life story. You are not acted upon by the world. You act upon the world through the power of your imagination. Now you may ask, how do I make this shift? How do I awaken to my true nature? The answer, my friends, lies in the proper use of your imagination. For your imagination is not a mere fantasy-making faculty. It is the very creative power of God within you. To find yourself again, you must first understand that your imagination creates reality. Whatever you assume to be true, whatever you feel to be real, will inevitably manifest in your world. This is the law of assumption, and it is the foundation of all creation. So, if you feel lost, if you feel disconnected from your true self, it is because you have imagined yourself to be so. You have assumed the state of being lost, and your outer world has faithfully reflected this inner assumption. But just as you have imagined yourself into this state, you can imagine yourself out of it. The key is to shift your imagination from the state of being lost to the state of being found. You must imagine yourself as already being who you truly are, as already embodying your highest self. This is not pretense or self-deception. It is the recognition of your true identity. Who would I be if I were already my high self? How would I think? How would I feel? How would I act? Then in your imagination, step into this state. Feel the feelings of being this person. Think the thoughts of this person. Move through the world as this person would. This is not about changing who you are, but about recognizing who you have always been. It is about stripping away the false identities you have assumed in awakening to your true nature as pure awareness as that I am. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Neville, this sounds like mere fantasy. How can imagining myself as my highest self actually change anything? To this, I say, your entire world is a product of your imagination. Everything you see, everything you experience, is a projection of your consciousness. When you change your inner world, your outer world must change to reflect it. This is not wishful thinking. It is the law of your being. As within, so without. As above, so below. Your inner world is the cause. Your outer world. So to find yourself again, you must persist in the assumption of your desired state. You must live from the end, feeling and acting as though you are already the person you wish to be. This is not about forcing change or struggling against your current circumstances. It is about shifting your attention from what is to what could be. From the apparent reality of the senses to the true reality of imagination. Imagine a scene that implies you've already found yourself. Perhaps you see yourself confidently pursuing your passions or living with a deep sense of inner peace. Make the scenes vivid and as real as possible. Engage all your senses. Feel the emotions you would feel if this were your reality right now. Then, carry this feeling with you throughout your day. Let it inform your thoughts, your words, your actions. Live from the state of the wish fulfilled, 
knowing that as you do so, you are impressing this new self-concept upon your subconscious mind, which must then project it into your outer world. Remember, my dear friends, the world is yourself pushed out. Everything you experience is a reflection of your own consciousness. So if you want to find yourself again, you must first find yourself within. You must recognize your true identity as the awareness behind all your experiences, as the creator of your reality. This recognition is not something that happens once and is done. It is a continual practice, a moment-by-moment -moment choice to identify with your true self rather than with a limited ego self. It is a constant remembering of who you really are. Now, some of you may be wondering, but Neville, what about my past? What about all, all the times I felt lost or disconnected from myself? To this I say, the past only exists in your imagination. It has no power over you except the power you give it through your attention and belief. Your true self, the I am that you are, exists in the eternal now. It is not bound by time or space. It is not limited by your past experiences or future expectations. It is pure potential, pure creativity, always free to express itself anew in each moment. So, to find yourself again, you must learn to live in the present moment, fully aware of your true identity as the creator of your reality. This doesn't mean ignoring your past or neglecting to plan for your future. It means recognizing that both past and future are creations of your imagination and that your power to create lies always in the present moment. When you catch yourself dwelling on past failures or worrying about future uncertainties, gently bring your attention back to the present. Remind yourself, I am. I exist now in this moment as pure awareness, as infinite potential. From this space of pure being, you can choose a new how to express yourself in the world. This practice of present moment awareness is not about forcing your mind to be blank or suppressing your thoughts and feelings. It's about observing them from the perspective of your true self, the unchanging awareness behind all your experiences. As you cultivate this awareness, you begin to see that your thoughts and feelings are not who you are, but rather experiences you're having. You are the experiencer, the observer, the eternal I am. This realization is the key to finding yourself again, for it frees you from identification with the limited ego self and opens you to the infinite potential of your true nature. Now, my dear friends, I want you to understand that finding yourself again is not a destination, but a journey. It's not about reaching a point where you can say, ah, oh, now I found myself. It's about continually deepening your awareness of who you truly are. Continually expanding your expression of your divine nature. This journey of self-discovery is the very purpose of your existence. You are here to express more and more of your divine nature, to bring more and more of heaven to earth. And you do this through the power of your imagination, through your ability to conceive of and feel the reality of states beyond your current experience. So, do not be discouraged. If you don't feel an immediate transformation, do not lose heart if you find yourself slipping back into old patterns of thought and behavior. Remember, every moment is a new opportunity to choose again, to align yourself with your true nature. The key is persistence. You must persist in the assumption of your desired state regardless of appearances. You must continue to imagine yourself as your highest self to feel the reality of this state, even when your senses deny it. For it is your persistent assumption, your unwavering faith, in the reality of your imagined state, that brings it into physical manifestation. Now let us discuss a practical technique for finding yourself again. I call this technique remembering when. It involves creating a future memory of having found yourself, of living as your highest self. Close your eyes and imagine a scene that implies you have already found yourself. Perhaps you see yourself confidently pursuing your passions or living with a deep sense of inner peace. Make this scene as vivid and as real as possible. Engage all your senses. Feel the emotions you would feel if this were your reality right now. Now here's the crucial part. I imagine looking back on your current moment from this future state. See yourself remembering 
when you started this journey of self-discovery, feel the gratitude and joy of having transformed your life. Hear yourself saying, I remember when I felt lost and disconnected. How wonderful it is to have found myself again. This technique is powerful because it places your desired state in the past, making it feel more real and attainable to your subconscious mind. It also creates a sense of inevitability about your transformation as if it has already happened and you're simply remembering it. Practice this technique daily, preferably as you fall asleep at night and as you wake up in the morning. These are times when your subconscious mind is most receptive to new impressions. As you persist in this practice, you will find your outer world beginning to reflect your inner assumption of having found yourself. Remember, my dear friends, the outer world is a reflection of your inner world. As you change your self-concept, as you align more and more with your true nature, your experiences will change to match this new inner reality. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Neville, what about my current circumstances? What about the people and situations in my life that seem to reinforce my feeling of being lost? To this, I say, your circumstances are not the cause of your state of being. They are the effect of it. They are the shadow cast by your consciousness. To change your circumstances, you must change your consciousness. You must shift your attention from what is to what could be, from the apparent reality of the senses to the true reality of imagination. As you do this, as you persist in the assumption of having found yourself, you will find your circumstances naturally adjusting to reflect this new self-concept. This doesn't mean you should ignore your current reality or pretend that challenges don't exist. It means that you should see your current reality as a reflection of past thoughts and assumptions and know that as you change these thoughts and assumptions, your reality must change to match them. Remember, the world is yourself pushed out. Everyone and everything in your experience is a reflection of some aspect of your consciousness. So, if you want to find yourself again, look to your world. What is it showing you about your current self-concept? What beliefs and assumptions are being reflected back to you? This self-reflection is not about judgment or criticism. It's about awareness. It's about recognizing that you have the power to change your world by changing yourself. It's about taking responsibility for your creation and using your creative power consciously and deliberately. Now let us talk about the role of feeling in finding yourself again. You see, my dear friends, it is not enough to merely think about being your highest self or to visualize scenes of having found yourself. You must feel the reality of this state. You must experience the emotions associated with being who you truly are. Feeling is the secret. It is the power that impregnates your subconscious mind and brings your imaginal acts to life. When you combine clear mental imagery with intense feeling, you create an irresistible force that must express itself in your outer world. So, as you imagine scenes of having found yourself, as you step into the state of being your higher self, allow yourself to feel the associated emotions. Feel the confidence, the peace, the joy, the sense of purpose that comes with living as your true self. Let these feelings permeate your entire being. Here's a crucial point. You must feel these emotions now in the present moment, not as something you hope to feel in the future. Remember, your true self exists in the eternal now. It is not bound by time or space. So to align with your true self, you must feel the reality of it now. This practice of feeling, the reality of your desired state, is not about forcing emotions or pretending to feel something you don't. It's about tapping into the truth of who you are, into the joy and peace that are your birthright as a divine being. As you cultivate these feelings, you'll find that they become more and more natural. You'll find yourself spontaneously feeling confident, peaceful and purposeful, even in situations that used to trigger feelings of being lost or disconnected. Now, some of you may be wondering, but Neville, what if I can't maintain these positive feelings? What if I slip back into negative emotions? To this, I say, do not judge yourself for your emotions. All emotions are valid experiences of your human journey. The key is not to identify with them, not to let them define who you are. Remember, you are not your emotions. You are the awareness that experiences emotions. 
So when negative emotions arise, observe them without judgment. Recognize them as temporary experiences, like clouds passing through the sky of your consciousness. They do not define you, and they have no power over you unless you give them power through your attention and belief. This practice of non-identification with your emotions is a powerful tool for finding yourself again. It allows you to maintain your connection with your true self. Your I am nature, even as you experience the full range of human emotions. As you continue on this journey of self-discovery, you may find that your relationships begin to change. This is natural and necessary. As you align more and more with your true self, you may find that some relationships no longer resonate with who you are becoming. At the same time, you may attract new relationships that reflect your new self-concept. Remember, everyone in your life is a reflection of some aspect of your consciousness. As you change, your reflection must change. This doesn't mean you need to end relationships, but it does mean that your interactions may shift as you shift. See this as an opportunity for growth and expansion. Allow yourself to outgrow relationships that no longer serve you and be open to new connections that align with your highest self. Trust that as you find yourself again, you will naturally attract people and experiences that reflect your true nature. Now let us discuss the importance of self-love in finding yourself again. You see, my dear friends, to truly find yourself, you must love yourself unconditionally. This doesn't mean loving only your positive qualities or achievements. It means loving all of yourself, including your perceived flaws and mistakes. Remember, you are a divine being having a human experience. Your perceived flaws and mistakes are not who you are. They are experiences you are having. They are opportunities for growth and self-realization. When you can love and accept all aspects of your human experience, you open yourself to a deeper recognition of your true nature. Practice looking at yourself through the eyes of love. See yourself as the divine being you truly are. Appreciate the unique way you express your divine nature. Celebrate your journey of self-discovery with all its twists and turns. This self-love is not narcissism or ego inflation. It is a recognition of your true worth as a divine being. It is an alignment with the love that is your true nature. As you cultivate this self-love, you'll find it easier to express love towards others. For you will recognize that same divine nature in them. Now, my dear friends, I want to address a common misconception about finding yourself. Many believe that to find yourself, you must go on a physical journey, travel to far off lands, or have extraordinary experiences. While these things can certainly be part of your journey, they're not necessary for finding yourself. Remember, you are not something to be found in the external world. You are the finder, the seeker, the eternal I am. No matter where you go or what you do, you are always here, always now, always aware. The journey of finding yourself is an inner journey. A journey of awareness and self-realization. This inner journey can be undertaken anywhere, at any time. It doesn't require special circumstances or optimal conditions. It simply requires your willingness to turn your attention inward, to observe your thoughts and feelings, to recognize your true nature as awareness itself. So, do not wait for the perfect moment to begin this journey. Do not postpone your self-discovery until you have more time, more money, or fewer responsibilities. Begin now, in this moment, by simply being aware of your own awareness. This is the first step in finding yourself again. And it is always available to you. As you continue on this journey of self-discovery, you may encounter what seem like obstacles or setbacks. Perhaps you find yourself slipping back into old patterns of thought or behavior. Perhaps you face challenges that seem to contradict your new self-concept. Do not be discouraged by these experiences. They are not obstacles to your journey. They are part of your journey. Remember, every experience, whether you label it as positive or negative, is an opportunity for growth and self-realization. Every challenge is a chance to practice living from your true self, to choose again how you will respond to life. I am not this challenge. I am not this feeling of frustration or fear. I am the awareness that experiences these things, and I have the power to choose my response.
from this space of awareness, you can then choose to respond from your highest self. This practice of choosing your response, rather than reacting automatically, is a powerful way to align with your true self. It is a way of exercising your divine creative power, of consciously shaping your reality rather than being shaped by it. As you continue on this path of self-discovery, you may find that your perception of time begins to shift. You see, my dear friends, time as we typically experience is a creation of consciousness. It is not an absolute reality, but a relative experience shaped by our state of being. When you are aligned with your true self, when you are living from the state of I am, you may find that time seems to expand or contract. You may experience moments of timelessness where past, present, and future seem to coexist in an eternal now. This shift in time perception is a natural result of aligning with your true nature, which exists beyond time. It is a sign that you are awakening to the deeper reality of your being. Embrace these experiences. Allow them to deepen your understanding of who you truly are. Now let us discuss the role of silence in finding yourself again. In our busy, noisy world, we often overlook the power of silence. But silence is not merely the absence of sound. It is the presence of your own being undistracted by the chatter of the mind or the noise of the world. In silence, you can hear the still, small voice of your true self. You can sense the presence of the I am that you are. This silence is always there, underlying all your experiences, but it often goes unnoticed in the business of daily life. I encourage you to make time each day for silence. This doesn't mean you need to sit in meditation for hours, although that can be beneficial. It simply means creating moments of inner quiet amidst your daily activities. It means pausing to be aware of your own awareness, to sense the presence of your true self. As you cultivate this practice of silence, you may find that it begins to permeate your entire life. You may find yourself naturally falling into states of inner quiet. Even in the midst of activity, this inner silence is a powerful tool for staying connected to your true self, for maintaining your center amidst the fluctuations of life. Now, my dear friends, as we near the end of our discussion, I want to remind you of a fundamental truth. You are already what you seek to become. The self you're trying to find is not something separate from you, not something you need to acquire or achieve. It is who you are at your core. Your true nature is pure awareness. The journey of finding yourself is really a journey of remembering who you are, of awakening to your true nature. It is a process of peeling away the layers of false identities and limiting beliefs that obscure your true self. This process is not always easy. It requires courage, persistence, and faith. It requires a willingness to question your assumptions about yourself in the world. It requires a commitment to living from your highest truth, even when it's uncomfortable or challenging. But I assure you, my dear friends, the rewards of this journey are beyond measure. As you align more and more with your true self, you will experience a deep sense of peace and fulfillment. You will find yourself naturally expressing your unique gifts and living your purpose. You experience life as a joyful adventure of self-discovery and self-expression. Remember, this journey is not about becoming someone different. It's about becoming more fully yourself. It's about allowing more and more of your true nature to express itself through you. It's about living from the state of I am, from the awareness of your oneness with the creative power of the universe. As you continue on this journey, be gentle with yourself. Celebrate each step, each moment of awakening, each expression of your true self. Trust in the process, knowing that as you persist in aligning with your true nature, your outer world must conform to this inner reality. And remember, you are not alone on this journey. We are all on this path of self-discovery together, each in our own unique way. As you awaken to your true nature, you contribute to the awakening of all humanity. Your journey of finding yourself again is a gift not only to yourself, but to the entire world. So, my dear friends, I encourage you to embrace this journey with all your heart. Live boldly from the state of I am. Express your true nature fearlessly. Let your light shine brightly, illuminating the path for yourself and others. In every moment, 
you have the power to choose again, to align with your true self, to create a new. Use this power wisely and lovingly. Remember who you are. Remember your divine nature. Remember that you are the very creative power of the universe, expressing itself as you. You leave here tonight, carry with you this knowledge. I am. Let it be your constant companion, your guiding light, your source of strength and inspiration. Let it remind you of your true identity, of your infinite potential, of your oneness with all that is. And when you find yourself feeling lost or disconnected, when you forget who you truly are, simply pause and remind yourself. I am. In those two simple words lies the key to finding yourself again. The key to awakening to your true nature, the key to living a life of purpose, joy, and fulfillment. My dear friends, you are on a magnificent journey of self-discovery and self-expression. Embrace it fully. Live it joyfully. And always remember, you are the creator of your reality, the author of your life story. Write it beautifully. Live it authentically. Be who you truly are. And now, as we conclude our time together, I want you to take a moment to feel the truth of who you are. Close your eyes if you wish and simply be aware of your own awareness. Feel the presence of the I am within you. Let it fill you with its light, its love, its infinite potential. From this space of pure being, set your intention for the journey ahead. How will you express your true nature in the world? How will you live from the state of I am? What glorious reality will you create with the power of your imagination? Remember, the choice is always yours. In every moment, you have the power to align with your true self, to create a new, to find yourself again. Use this power wisely and lovingly for the benefit of yourself and all beings. Go forth now, my dear friends, and live from the truth of who you are. Let your light shine brightly in the world. Be the fullest expression of your divine nature. And always remember, you are not lost. You're not separate. You're not limited. You are the eternal I am, forever whole, forever free, forever creating. Thank you for your attention, for your willingness to explore these profound truths. May your journey of self-discovery be filled with joy, wonder, and endless possibilities. May you always remember the magnificence of who you truly are. And may you find yourself again and again in each precious moment of your sacred journey.